The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the uh, weekly Niantic User Group. Today is the 8th of April, uh, 2019. Uh, we're back after a, a two-week break. Where I've been on uh, away on vacation. Uh, much uh, <laughs> much earned and uh, you know very greatly received as well. Okay, so... Um, as always, if anyone's got any questions or queries and so on, then feel free to uh, raise your hand and we'll uh, we'll get uh, particular questions uh, opened. Uh, we'll have a look and so on. Um, updates: There's only there's been some work uh, been going on, but of course, while there's been a vacation, there's, uh, obviously there's not been too much uh, work going on. Um, some changes to the Chillcat uh, wrapper, which will uh, oh, let's show my screen. Some changes to the Chillcat wrapper, which will, uh, of course, come out in uh, in due course. Uh, and some other changes to the report control, which are in progress now. They're not uh, they're not ready for release yet, but um, I hope to have them by the end of this week. So by next week's uh, webinar, we should have a new version of the report control out, and that will actually include your um, the, the, the facilities. Uh, they will include the facilities for basically not requiring a Clarion browse on the on the screen uh, in order to still be able to read a, temp a table and so on. So this is a feature we've been trying to get out for quite a while, and that will come into the uh, the next build. If I quickly show you. Uh, some of the changes which are, are coming. Just while waiting for waiting for questions, I'll just open the the question up so I can see when other when people type. So basically, um, we just go down to here and we've got a new uh, example which is going to be the table load. Now we've got under the uh, data source. We've got a new source of file. So previously you had data binding, manually load, and queue. Now you've got file as well. So this uh, this will definitely be of use um, um, uh, for be people who've got uh, legacy applications and you want to uh, do the equivalent of a file loaded report control, file loaded browse, if you will. So this will be uh, of advantage to yourself. So you'll be able to specify the file. You can see here it's prompting which file and which key it's going to go through. Now there's some other prompts to go underneath that, hence why it can't be released at the moment. Um, but what that will prompt for is the usual record filter and your range limits, just as you would do on a, a standard Clarion browse. So it will prompt for your record filter and your range limits. Um, that now, if we, I'm sure I put a I think where the options are, maybe it's under options and under the roles, you've now got an extra uh, uh, tab on here. And this is comes to basically some of the questions we've had in the past, which will be basically for um, the most efficient way to get data into your report control. So we've always encouraged create a group structure and that group structure should really match your uh, report control columns, if you will. So if you've got four columns in the report control, you want four columns in your group structure plus an ext uh, 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 an initial one, um, which is basically like a, a row ID, if you will. Well, now what you can do is the class can actually just create that for you. So you can see here you could turn it on, but if your data source is file, then it will automatically create it for you. So what I mean by that is We've got our data source set to file. We've got customers. And for my columns, I've got just one called col1, which is you know, just a equivalent, if you will, of a, a local column, a local field, if you will. So you've got col1. And then I've actually chose two fields out of the table. So now you can see we've got a lookup, which you didn't have before. So now you can look that up and say, yes, it's out of a table, just as you would a list box formatter. Uh, that's a code and the company name. And if we take a look at the generated source code, we'll see that it's now created us our group structure. So the report control happened to be called report control. 
but of course it will take on whatever name you've called it on the screen and so on the uh, sorry the, the, the class so it will take on that and then it creates this group called row data group it already knows that it's got this rec id so it puts that in for us we add um a column which was just equivalent of a local column so it creates that for you with a data type of any because it doesn't know what you're going to put in there because you've not told it truly what it is and then of course we said two fields from our table code and company name so it's created those for us as well so now we've got our group structure um and we can we behind the behind the scenes the new changes will take advantage of that to get the data from our local tables into the report control as fast as possible so it will behind the scenes make use of this but for those uh let's just take a a quick look if we said uh, the report control simple so this is the report control and its data type is manual which is the historical way and that's fine you can still work that it's got various different uh, columns defined which of course are all equivalent of local columns to it um but if we oh sorry if we go to the options of this and on here i have actually turned it on for testing purposes so I said, I do want to create a, a group structure for me. It does give you a little tip to say your group structures can't include any space characters or the uh, period or full stop characters. Uh, and that's purely because of naming conventions and restrictions within Clarion. So we've got that turned on. Our class is report control. So even on a manually loaded report control, you can now turn that on and it will define you your group structure automatically. So you can see here that we've got our role data group, rec ID, which it knows uh, it needs itself, and then all the other columns which were specified. So basically it saves you uh, creating your own group structure. So basically that, you could use it for the manual uh, loading. So that would be automated for you. And then for the new file loaded, uh, sorry, file data source. I'm trying to think of there was or another couple of other changes. Where are we? Oh, the new derived embed points, obviously, there's going to be, and these are still in progress. But um, we've now changed this naming of data when, like, the calendar needs data, it calls data underscore and file load records and file load events. So when the report control wants data, it will call the data ones, as you can imagine. And we've got um, data load which uh, you can just pass it one row ID or, or all, and it will basically reload the uh, report control from that. Um, but you've also got the extra ones where, just checking, they are in this version. Yeah, validate record. So just like you would have in a Clarion browser, and you've got validate record and returns um, record out of range or record filtered, um, this will work in the exact same manner. So as it's going through your TPS or your SQL table or whatever, as it's going through your file table, it will be calling this um, to check that the record that it's on is valid. So it's just like a Clarion browse. If you want to um, let's close that, uh, if you wanted to um, uh, have the equivalent of Clarion browse where you got your validate records and so on then that would be the equivalent um, embed point here so I've tried to keep them very similar validate record in Clarion val validate record um, in, in a report control and you also have set queue record well we as isn't a queue because it's a group so you should have a new one called set and I can't remember the name of this I actually did it on the plane while I was flying back uh, set row cells so yeah that will be called it's equivalent to the set queue record we'll, we'll be covering this in much more uh, detail in, in future uh, webinars so don't worry it's just showing you what you've got coming and hopefully you'll get this uh, next week or by the latter end of this week so that will be called as it's wanting to go and put data into the report control so if you wanted to manipulate any data then that would be the point to do it so you've got that coming and as i say there's some uh, chill cat uh, updates uh, coming through as well so um even though it was a vacation there was actually some uh, some work done as well just to uh, to keep me uh, to keep me busy
Okie dokie, so we've got a question in. Let me uh, just take a look. I think it's uh, Alejandro. Let's open the microphone. Are you there? Yes, and uh, I'm here. How are you? Yes, fine, thank you. Yourself? Very well, thank you. Very well. Okay, the question, did you see my question today about the it Google did task? come up. It did come up, but I, I've got to admit, I was um, I was working on um, a particular customer system, so it was very hard to, um, uh, to 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 work on it. To be fair, so but let me just look at the question now to see what it was. I know you, you mentioned Google Tasks. Okay, so the question is, how can I change the user of Google Task? Because if I use at me just gives me the service account tasks, but if I change it for other users, it doesn't work. Exactly. Okay, let me just try, uh, let me just close that one. Okay, so I've got a service account table, uh, you know, a key. I've obviously mm -hmm. got the thing, uh, the uh, the scope, if you will, because uh, the way Google works is you you enable different scopes, so calendar, tasks, documents, yes, so on and so forth. I did that. You've got that I enabled. That. Okay, so what you should, um, you're saying, if you uh, do, they come under the same domain. Yes. Yes, yes. It's in the same domain, the Google task. Then you should, then, um, then pass. The user, sorry. The user is in the same domain. Yeah, you should be. Let's have a quick look. I don't think I've got any. I'll let some debug in. Sorry about that. Yes. So that's just brought, as we can see, uh, one down. I'll just quickly log in. So I can actually bring the tasks in, but you're you're trying you're connecting. Are you get a connection with the other user then? Yes, yes, but I don't have connection with. Uh, sorry, I don't have connection with uh, another user. So if I create a new user in the same domain, okay, mm -hmm. and I want to get the tax list of this user, I can't. Can you get the calendar events of the other user? Yes, I can. so you can. Mm, okay. I can because I did. Uh, I show it uh, to you what I did. I changed the the URL so to change the user ID, the calendar ID. So this works for me, but not the Google Task. Okay, then that. To be honest, I'd have to have a look at it. I mean, I'm, obviously, I've, I've checked it in. Um, hang on, we have this working in one of the sites. Yeah, if we have this working in one of the applications, the, the, the customer application I was working on today, um, they have, uh, imagine if you will, they've got the Google Calendar, uh, multiple users, so they're going in via a service account, uh, they're going in on different user uh, email addresses within that account, and within their calendar, they actually have different, uh, different schedules. So you've got one schedule synchronizing against one user's calendar and a different schedule synchronizing against a different user's calendar uh, which of course you can do that's uh, that, that, that's no particular problem uh, but they've also got the same they have their tasks going into the calendar as well because they want basically just one place to be able to see and stop and show uh, the, the the type of data um so I would have to check it from the task point of view. I, at the moment, I've, I had Dev and I have Dev2, but I've, I've turned off Dev2 because I, I didn't need it. I'd have to put that back on and do some tests. So it's something I'll have to look at. Um, I can look at it as early as tomorrow for you, but I, I, I can't do it now because I don't have the second um, uh, account activated. Okay, I would appreciate that. That's fine. As, as I mean, for, for, for everyone, you, you appreciate, you know, you, you, you take a break and uh, you come back to a load of emails. And we're just playing catch up on, on quite a lot of, uh, of emails and so on. Everyone was very patient, you know, taking a, taking a break was much appreciated. So everyone was very patient. So um, I, I do thank you for that. I'll get a look at that tomorrow for you, but I just can't do it at the moment because I 
to turn off the second account. After we'd done our testing and, and so on and so forth, then we didn't see the point in leaving it on because we only actually use, use Google for these tests. We don't actually use it for um, the, the particular things we use Office 365 internally. Mm -hmm. So, but that's no problem. I can look at that for you tomorrow. That's uh, that's fine. Okay. Thank you very much, Andy. No problem. No problem. And feel free to by, by the well, around about this time ish, you know, so in the afternoon in the UK and probably morning for yourself. Feel free to just jump on Skype and drop me a message, and I'll tell you exactly where we're up to. And if nothing else, it'll just remind me. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. Bye. -bye. So, okay, um, got another question. It's Michael, have we got? Um, oh, hang on a second, no, sorry, that. Uh, there's Bill, uh, I'll quickly open the mic for Bill. Hi, Bill. Hey, all I did was put. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think that would be an advantage to yourself. And uh, although the user's not here, but there was another user who, uh, I think they've just been on the news groups actually, I did monitor them while I'm away, but that was via the phone, which was very hard. Uh, but somebody was, uh, one of the other users, they had a leg legacy application, they're using the browser enhancer, which of course is, is limited because you have to be page loaded as, as yourself, you know. Um, and they, were basically wanting to try and find oh sorry. <laughs> they were wanting to try and find a way of getting the, the equivalent of file loaded so i've recommended that they just wait for like a week or so you know and this was always away and then they'll they'll get the power of the uh, the new um the new change uh so it should be we'll get it as loading as fast as possible but uh, as easy as possible and you know and then when that's done we're going to try and write the equivalent of the list note uh, list box formatter which will be um a window which you'll call from the template so there'll be a button on the template which will let you actually do the equivalent of adding the the columns on the fly no no small feet i'm not sure how we're going to do it but we're going to have a go <laughs> sounds good i appreciate no i just just had a clap for you getting no. that done that's that's no, great. no, very good. Yep, yep. We hopefully next week you actually see it in action and you'll you'll have it in your application to start playing about with. So sounds good. Okay, okay. Okay, so we've got Michael. Is that, oh no, we're, oh, sorry, no, I am going trying to go down in, in order. Um, sorry, quickly, we've got Roberto then, and it's uh, need help connecting to chill cutting QuickBooks. And okay. Uh, 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 Roberto, Roberto, Roberto. Hi there. Hi, Roberto. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Okay. So I've been chasing you down. I haven't been very patient, but that's okay. Well, I, I have to <laughs> say, it's uh, yeah, we got we got some messages, and um, yeah, we can only do what we can do, can't we? So it's just, uh, right. Yeah, so, um, okay, look, I've got a requirement. Um, the John's online too because it's it's actually for him. Um, we're we're trying to get his application to work with QuickBooks. Okay. Using Chillcat, but okay. we can't use the connectivity that you're using. You know, going through the Internet Explorer inf interface and so on. We need to be able to use something internal. You know, like a COM uh, connectivity, so that the application, because it's running on TS Plus server, so that the application. Uh, since it's been shared, just the application, you know, a remote app type of thing. Okay, so uh, let me just, so you're it, talking about... Yeah, and so we've got it working with uh, Bruce's, actually, it's, it's Dries's code to connect to Quick QuickBooks uh, through the OAuth. And we have a token, but how do we feed Chillcats with that token that we already have? And that's where we're kind of stuck. We've tried and tried and tried, and it doesn't seem to. Are you still anything. posting a window? Are you still going through? Sorry, just let me bring that into play. You're still going through OAuth 2? Yes, of course. I was going to say, because if you're going through the old one, then that's not going to work. You're still going to need to go via. We get this. Yes, we get this, and we get the token and everything. Yeah. I mean, that we is actually it. under review. 
um, Bill has highlighted a, a hopefully a, a way that we can enhance that. But at, at present, until we've got a, another way, then we're going to have to go through OAuth, which is uh, which is what you've just seen in action there. So what you're right. trying to and, do, and we do that. We we have a little, you know, it opens up a little window and it goes through it. But it just it's inside the application. It's it's a calm. Okay. Uh, so what we're doing here. So let's just disconnect. And just go do that again. So this, what's happening from a steps point of view is we're calling the connect. Mm -hmm. That does some some workings behind the scenes, um, mm -hmm. but then basically it it prepares the uh, Chilcat library to start listening on a particular port. So that's why we're using this 3017. Uh, but it just needs to start listening on a port for the answer back from uh, QuickBooks, and that answer contains your token. Now, right. so you're, you're getting that token out. We're, we're already getting that token with the OAuth from Net, NetTalk. Okay. Okay, so basically, yeah, so you're, you're seeing whatever open up. We get this, yeah, yeah we get this, get and we connect and everything. We get the token back and so on. But we need to feed your chill cat. Okay. So uh, that, 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 that point, that token. yeah, that at that point, we don't see it on the screen. That's generated a, a, a session token. Uh, forget these. These are just your login details to be able to. Yeah, because get you can use point. those and log in with some other user, anyways. I really don't understand what the client ID. It's not really very personal, is it? <laughs> so well, it's just that's it, security protocols, um, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're not really personal client ID and client servers either. So I mean, okay, let me just take a, a quick look here then, and uh, we'll bring this into into focus. This uh, task will be a second. Do, 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 do. So if I bring that into uh, into play, we're looking at the connect, are we not? Yep. Yeah, okay. All of these are being passed um, to the Chill Cattle Off library in preparation. That command starts it listening. And this is where, oh, hang on. No, we're actually doing that's some weird RX. So basically, you've got the equivalent. You want to bypass that and have it part of your own. Uh, window that opens. Right, but I think you're setting some flags inside your class or something or other apart, and we really don't know which which flags well, you're setting. Okay, so. Can you not just set that, the access token? Yeah, we tried that. But we think maybe you need to set the company ID also. And we really don't know where to grab the company ID. It's not coming in that JSON file. No, your company ID is associated with the client. The client ID and the client secret. Oh, sorry, no, no, sorry, no. no it'll, it be the, it'll be the realm. Uh huh, the realm. Yep. The realm, and, will be and which the realm ID doesn't into. seem to come back in the JSON file. No, uh, it, it's part of it, no, it's part of the redirection uh, parameter. Mm -hmm. So how do we fill that? Oof. Connect. Let's go off two. You see, there's no guarantees 
that OAuth 2 is exposing all of the actual things which have been received. All sorry, the things, the, 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 the properties and the parameters. There's no guarantee that that's exposing everything to you. Mm-hmm. That I really will have to do some digging on um, uh, to go back to when I was first doing the connectivity in the first place, I'll be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because this, I, I'm doing some settings here, as you can see. That's great. These are really just right. the storage and for you. Yeah, they, to, those were easy to fill except yeah. for the realm. Yeah. So, well, the realm, as I say, that will be one of the uh, – we'll, we'll probably set realm earlier, though, will we not? Oh, no. No, we won't. We, they, they, the user selects the realm, which is the company, and then comes back. Mm-hmm. So for those That's who are watching, idea. we just disconnect. Yeah, we, we're going into here. Um, mm. We're connecting, yes. At this point, it's which realm are we going into? US 1, right. UK 3. So we're going into this one, which, of course, they're only presented from – the related to the client ID that's got access to those. Right, exactly. So that's where your client ID comes in. That's granted. So basically, it's what's been passed here. Uh, everything gets sent back. Uh, this is listening on 3017, so of course this receives it. Now, it's what receives it is the OAuth library. So let's just jump back to what we've got here. So the OAuth library's got some... Um, uh, initialization stuff. So we've got there uh, the client ID, your secret, which you've just seen, various other um, uh, particular uh, uh, attributes which are all going to be passed um, as part of its authentication. It's going to go off. It comes back. It starts listening, which is here. Uh, sorry, uh, not that's a listening port there. Starts listening, and then it comes back on that 3017. So that would actually receive it. And yes, we can get to certain other parts, but we're going to have to take a look at the Chillcat OAuth 2 to see what other parts, and they might be that they're readable, uh, read only. So, I mean, I'm not saying that, I'm just. Mm. So let's take a look in here. So the library you'd be looking at would be the OAuth 2. Right. Can talk in response. I mean, in fairness to um, to Jillcat and to Matt, he doesn't really hide anything away. If it's if it's there and exposed, he usually exposes it to you. He's, he's pretty good like that. In fairness. Um, Tell you what I'll do. I'll have a look um, at enhancing this so that it doesn't necessarily have to. Where are we? Uh, call. Can't see if we're looking here now. The shell execute. So rather than mm-hmm. doing that, I'll have a look at maybe adding uh, the facility where we can call uh, our own window. And that window right. would be the Kojok web browser or the right. uh, Nbit HTML browser. Right, but that'd both, be great. Both of which yeah. will be inside of your win- your application. Right. Now, all that's going to do is just yeah, you know, keep it all in-house, so to speak. That, that's fine. We can do that. Mm-hmm. We'll still be presented with the exact scenario you're at now. You you can get to the information because I know exactly the, 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 what you're probably doing there. I use the HTML editor in a view only mode to extract tokens out of another website that I go to in the uh-huh. in the betting system. So uh, so yes, basically um, I, I I log in via my own window within the application, gives me all the answers back, and then I can go to the actual uh, returned page and get mm-hmm. out the access tokens and so on and so forth. So yeah, so yes, this, this is our main problem. There is that shell execute of an external application. Yeah, well. I'm not convinced it's, that's the, 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 the particular particular problem. Yeah, I mean, well, that, that's a problem for us anyways, yeah, for the, the way we've got it set up. So we could we could possibly look at um, putting a call in there which open, opens up a window and which uses the Mbit control or uses the mm-hmm. the uh, Nbit uh, in view-only mode, Nbit, uh, Nbit HTML editor in, in mm-hmm. view-only mode. That's not a problem. Um, that will give us our, our tokens. It's where we set it within the OAuth 2 library because basically you can imagine 
the OAuth 2 has been listening. So it's not only has it got the things that we've primed up, it's also got the answers back, which have just been passed to it by the redirect. So there's going to be... Can't we just use a docking pane there? No, 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 no. You're missing my point. So, yes, we, we, if you take a look here, we've got the OAuth 2, and it's been primed up prior to the call to this. And then we set other things. So we set the authorization endpoint. Yeah, that's fine. We set various different properties and methods uh, of the OAuth 2 library. Now, but that's not all what's going to be set. So we do some pre preparation there. That's great. And some other things as well. So we can see here a couple of other things set. But when that gets an answer, so that goes into wait mode. But when it gets an answer, that's also going to get other things passed back to it from um, QuickBooks, what we haven't set. So it's going to have mm -hmm. it's going to have the realm, it's going to have the access token, it's going to have various other attributes, which we 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 can't set. Only only uh, QuickBooks themselves can set because that's per session. So it's going to contain those. So the by the time and then one of the last things it does. Forget any of this code here. What you're seeing. One of the last things we do when we know we've got a connection is then we call, uh, we we connect via our REST because all of our communications is going to be done via the REST object after that. Mm -hmm. So we do a connection. That's fine. That's just going to the base API on an SSL. So that, that's fine. After that, you have to bind the two together. And what that's, that, basically what we're doing there is we're binding the OAuth 2 object to the REST so that the REST communications can get to all of the properties. So you're still going to have, even if we replace that shell execute with a Kojok browser or the NBIT browser, if we replace that, we're still going to have that same uh, the scenario that you're now faced with. So where do we set what other properties the OAuth 2 wants? Because I'll bet on yours, if you put some debug in, it's that command that's failing for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we get error 500, whatever that is. Oh, 500 uh, an internal server error. Is it a response 500? Yeah. That's an internal server error from mm -hmm. QuickBooks. Yeah, we're lacking something. You yeah, know, so it won't be, so that, that to me, that reads to me that it's not initialized correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So, because then, after that, when you're trying to uh, download a customer or download an invoice or, or whatever, yeah. that will be replacing the, that will be returning you uh, the 500. And that's because what's being passed to it via the REST object after that, because all of the other comms, e.g., I'll just bookmark that, and we'll do S download. So download account. That in turn will call uh, read. S dot read. Does some preparing, so on and so forth, and then it uses the REST class, which of course has now been linked to the OAuth 2 for authentication, and it can successfully go and pass whatever it needs to uh, to uh, QuickBooks to say, "Here's my authentication. Can I have the customers, please? Here's the authentication. Can I have the invoices, please?" And so on and so forth. But um, that bit, if that failed. To initialize the OAuth 2 correctly, then what you're linking in the what you're linking to the rest is basically a, 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 a bad object. So if you're gonna, mm -hmm. it's gonna be, I can't. The 500, the bit, just a wild card of. Uh, well, I, I was noticing when I was doing that that when the the Realm ID mm -hmm. in the path URL, um, it was missing the company ID. It was just they had two slashes. Yeah, the so there's going to be some of the other attributes. Now, what they are, we'll have to really do some digging. It's not going to be a, an easy one, but it's going to be, hopefully, everything's exposed. So all of these, what we're seeing here, is the only things that we really need to uh, set and look at. Okay, but that we'll have to, uh, that we'll, we'll have to have a look at. Mm -hmm. Is there any other things he's got there? There's the, the monitor. Yeah, start the use. Yeah, there's nothing. Ah. Yeah. You see, that's exactly what comes back. So you can see here, you've got a realm, which will be part. So you can see there that it says realm ID and it's got a particular number. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're getting the realm ID of one of the parameters coming back. 
get redirect uh, request. Mm -hmm. So there will be other things. That comes in the out. URL, though. Yeah, as a parameter. Yeah. Yeah, so it's part of that redirect. So although you're trying to uh, trick it, if you will, so you can have your own window, which is all fine, mm -hmm. you're still going to need all of those parameters. Now, I can probably help right. out a right. little there because if you remember what's going on here is it's bouncing off my server. Right. So I could put some debug into that to have a look at all the parameters that are coming back so I can see all of the actual different parameters. Mm-hmm. I don't at the moment. All I literally do is take the exact header information that uh, that comes in from QuickBooks and bounce it straight onto 3017, localhost 3017. Uh, hence how this can then stop listening and get the information from it. Uh, but I could, just to help out, just see what, what's, what's coming in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, uh, that's no, that's no mean, mean feat, but again, Drop me a message tomorrow slash Wednesday, and we'll have a look at exactly where we on how we progress. Probably have to do that together, actually, if you want the truth. Right. Yep. And I'm willing to do that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now I'm back. It'll be a hell of a lot easier. <laughs> mhm. Mm so. Okie dokie. Um, Michael, where are we up to on time? Plenty of time. Yeah. Good. So just gonna. Uh, yep. Okay. So Michael. Hi, Michael. Hi, Andrew. Hi, hi. Yes, fine, thank you. Yourself? Fine. Uh, uh, I have three questions for okay. the calendar. Okay. Okay. The first is uh, how can I change the view of stuff in each day? For uh, example, with order of the name in each day of each stuff. Just one second, let me just uh, open up. Um... Yes. Uh, grab an example, won't be one second. Okay, I'll tell you what, we have actually got an example one. So I'll just move that out of the way. Okay, I think this is just a, one of our example applications. So we have used it in a past webinar, so uh, chances are we've done some mods to it. But let's have a look at uh, see if we can work off it, of this as an example. Okay, so uh, to do with multiple schedules, you say? Okay. Yes. Okay, so something like that one. And um, what? Is, what? What? Uh, I'm not quite following. What's the question then? Yeah. The question is uh, in uh, staff in its staff. Uh, sorry, in its uh, day. How can the uh, how can change the order? So the order of these. Yes. Okay, so so I think there's actual we do that in one of these. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so if I remove staff two, so I've got very simple defined in the template staff one, staff two, staff three. I remove staff two, so that's fine. And then I want to add staff two, and I think we we actually put a little example up to say where do you want to add them? Do you want to add them to the start? So they'll go here. After one, so it'll go in the middle or at the end. So if I said at the start, staff two would go there, then staff one, then staff three. Or let's just remove them again and we'll re-add. Or at the end, now as you expect them to go at the end. So the code, what you're looking for for that, and it'd be the yeah. same if you're loading uh, from the table and you know that's that, that's just the same code. So schedule. Okay. Now, oh, actually, I think I did some changes in this area to make it even easier for you, but let's just take uh, one quick look. Okay. You're going to have to reload the calendar anyway because you are a bit manipulating the, 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 the schedules which are on show. So 
all this is doing is just doing a, a clear stuff, uh, clear them, and then I re-add, but in the order that I want them. So you can see stuff two is added first, or it's added in the middle, or it's just added at the end. But if it's added to the end, I don't bother clearing them first. I just add uh, an extra one. And then you call the update view schedules. So it really would be how you want to do, to do, to do it in yours. So say, for example, let's just have a look at our read from, read from table. Now, I've not played about with this. If I take, uh, if I put AS in, yeah, AS has gone to the end. It's just added. What we could do is clear the schedule, clear the view, which is, uh, just let me bring that code across so we can kind of show you. I'll turn AS off again. Okay. Put that back on. And AS has gone to the end because all it's doing is just that one, the add view. So it's taking it off, delete view, or add view. What we could do if we wanted them to go into this order is we we could just issue a clear view schedules and then go down our our, our list in that order that is being displayed on the screen and if it's ticked put them and show them in that order um that's how you would uh, that's how you could do it i can quickly show you if you like yes but uh, i uh, i use the initial ski in the view of stuff the you the what the initial yes the initials in my uh, application oh. is, is the department of its staff. And the the order that I have in schedule, I have a, a department order, but not, but not in a name order. Well, I mean, it, how, how you want to go through that order is, is entirely up to yourself just to issue a thought command uh, prior. I mean, that's if you've got that on the screen. Um, what I'm saying is, OK, I'm going to um, let's just take a quick look at this. That, that scenario. It's, it's literally just the, the. Oh, just bear with me one second. I do need to take this. Won't be a second. Sorry about that. They've just started thinking. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that happens to be some initials. We'll actually tell you what we'll do. We'll um, we won't just have the uh, the initials in there. We'll have a, even a, a record code. Oh no, I don't have uh, I don't have that. We've got initials and names. Okay, we can we, we can possibly play about with that, just so you can get the uh, the idea. So, go to our double click. So you can see this is just going to do uh, an add view, which is a thing I said a second ago. So, uh, let's just work this. Yeah, we've got that. Update. So I'm going to do a um, calendar pro clear schedules, clear view schedule. Sorry, uh, I'm gonna hash equals one to our records in our queue. Now I've got them on the screen, so. No, I won't. We'll go through. I've only got the that key. Go through that uh, by one. Going to add the, that. Okay. ID short name. Should really good practice actually to put the short name in there as well. Um. Okie dokie. Um, oh yeah, so that one wants to be. Oh, 
Okay, so something like that. Now let's go, we'll, we'll quickly check, check that, and then we'll put a, a button on the screen where you could have them in different order, if you will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear. I'm going to quickly go through that queue. Yours could be a queue, could be a table. It's really, you know, however you want to read your, your staff, if you will. Departments, as you've just said a second ago. I'm going to go through, and if they're on, I'm going to add them again. And then at the end, I'm going to update and update the view schedules and refresh the contents. Let's take a quick look. Need to uh, add. Um, Type in where we had the. Uh, Okay. Okay. So that's our AS off, and there's Andrea Smith there. Ooh, does a lot of something. Change that. Clear. Oh, it won't be. Of course, sorry, it's out of sync. So, if we're going to do that. What we should really do is our uh, bell staff dot. Um, let's get it to re restart. Okay, so something like, uh, if we've got a, I'm going to add a S. It's gone to the start. I need to look at why uh, others have gone, but I don't expect that to disappear. Okay, the cube. Oh. Of course it wants to be. I'm going off a queue now rather than just the table. Sorry, that's me. I don't have a queue, Andy. I have only five. Oh, well, okay. yeah, yours will be fine. I'm just wondering why mine weren't working. But so okay. Andrea Smith has now gone there. So if I add AW, I expect AW to go in between these two. And AW has, which is B, uh, Andy Wilton. Uh, and BG should go before Dr. Dave Fremantle, and they have, okay. Okay. and so on. So really, the, the key to what we just said, and you, you could have a queue, you could have a, a table, but the key is clear what's there, add the ones you need in the order that you need them, and then do the update. And then last but not least, always do a refresh contents because you've changed which ones are on show. You've either taken some away or you've uh, added some. So do a refresh contents just to bring it back into sync. Okay. 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 So that's question one. <laughs> yes, it's, it's okay. This. Okay. Uh, I understand. Uh, in uh, the second question is uh, in in Michael Lander. Uh, in its appointment, I want to show the start end time and some co co comments, but the only I have is, is the subject here. Okay, yes. so you want to put the start and end time. Now, the calendar yes. does have... Time and, and comments. Okay, now... With each event, because that's ultimately what we're looking at here, you have... Um, like a subject you have the notes and you have a location and I, I, in the past i've used the location um for that exact uh facility so let's stick with that and i'm gonna i'm gonna go to one of these okay mm. uh, i think that was just a simple so because you are you can only uh, you can only display what 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 they allow, you know. So we are, our hands are a little tied from that point of view. So let's just take a data load. 
So what do we put in the location? We put nothing in the location there. So I'm going to say, okay, um, we'll do uh, format um, event start time at D1. And format um, event end time. Oops. At D1. Oh, time one, sorry. And that should be time one. I could tell I've been away, forgot how to code. Um, okay, so that, and we could put some comments in there if you wanted. Something along the lines of character 13. Uh, hello world, that kind of thing. Okay, so you can see here now you've got 10 till 11, hello world. And this is 11.15 to 12.15, hello world, and so on and so forth. So you could manipulate it that way if you wanted to. Yes, but the notes uh, are not showing in my calendar. Why? The, the, the what, sorry? The notes? The notes, the notes, yes. Um, I, I don't know. You should just load them into uh, the notes field. So the main ones you'd want to look at is look at the subject field. In fact, yes. let's just run it while that's running there. So let's just let's run that so I can quickly just bring it in. So there's a subject field. Yes. That one. That's underneath that goes the location, which we've just okay. done there. And then there should be um, notes. Oh, body. Sorry, body. As a body. Yes. yes. And that's the body under here. At six. At six. Is the body the notes, okay? Yeah. Okay. And uh, the last question is uh, in updates, uh, I I don't have the recurrence. The what, sorry? The recurrence is... Uh, is uh, oh, recur occurrence. Yeah. For... Yes, it's uh, disabled in my calendar, why? Oh, okay. Oh, I mean, okay. The, you, if the recurrence you take... If you're taking the example application, okay, so what you've got, let's just go to our recurring events. So, and then uh, we'll just bring that across here. Recurring events. So you, got, you can see here now, if I go to one of the other procedures and I double click, uh, we've got the, that disabled. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and that, that's because in that example calendar, I don't load recurring events. So I didn't want it to be, I, I, you know, I, I'm trying to keep the example nice and clean. So this is a simple calendar, no, no multiple staff, no reminders, no recurring, just a simple calendar. In, but I load the okay. recurring. Yep. No, no. In now in this one, I did want to ha allow for recurring. So if I go there, it will allow it. So, and that's all I've done for that is I pass an extra parameter to that update events to allow recurring. So the last parameter is allow recurring. Okay, I now, uh, And then if we look at the calendar, sorry, not that one. And then we look at how the, uh, how that is called. So you can see the parameters that get passed. So you've got parameters, it passes the schedule ID, so you, you know which person you've clicked on. It passes it a start date and a start time, and then it passes it over. So these are predefined start date. Okay. Start time. And on the other, it's over, and then I just pass it a true. Uh, it's true. And on the others, I pass it a false. Uh, and all I do then in the update form, I mean, you could have different update forms if you like. That's that's you know, it's just me purely from an example point of view. I wanted it um, if the calendar you were looking at didn't allow recurring, I didn't want them to be able to put recurring in there because I wanted it to keep it nice and clean. That's all. So it's purely what I did. So that's an optional parameter on the end. Yes, uh, I have the false. Okay. 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 And then if we okay. do that. You'll see, yes, yes. yeah, it goes through and sets it to disable. Yes, so yes that's, that's all that is. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. 
no problem. Thank you very much. And uh, I send you the my files for the get pro property field for right. uh, yeah, finders. I did. Um, I didn't get. I I didn't get a chance before we went away because uh, okay. just so so crazy if you want the truth. But uh, yeah, we're back now, playing a little catch up um, on on emails and so on. But yes, we will look at that. That's not a problem. I still got them in the uh, in the Skype chat where you sent them. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. No problem. <laughs> okay, and we've got one last one. I think it was Bill. Um, it's open. Send it straight in. Oh, so Bill was saying, let's just go to Bill. Sorry to put you on the spot, Bill. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm back. Okay, um, and this was to do with the uh, QuickBooks login. Is that correct? Yeah, I, and 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 I, and I don't I don't want anybody to misinterpret what I'm saying, um, because for 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 the purpose of what I needed, just to do a simple IIF file upload. Uh, going through all of the hoops of, of logging in and creating a developer account for each user and all this other stuff was, uh, was really more than I needed. So I, I did some research and found that AAA text. Um, right. And, and you, uh, you can auto post with them. You send them an AAF, so you, an IIF file and they do the upload for you on your behalf. Is that correct? Yeah, it, well, yeah, but you don't even send it to them. It, it's a real uh, – the way they're doing it is uh, you, the first time you you uh, install their program on, on the computer that's going to upload the IIF files, it somehow you log into QuickBooks and it registers that program right. with, within QuickBooks. And once that program becomes registered within QuickBooks, then it, it whatever it's going to do, it can do uh, whether the user's logged in or not. Yep. So that's very good. It, it completely eliminated that whole uh, thing about creating a developer account and and all of that. Now I'm not, I'm sure he had to do one at some point, but. Uh, but it's actually registering the program within QuickBooks and not and not each procedure that we're we're trying to do. Yeah. So and this comes to uh, earlier because I like to be quite open and transparent. And we were saying when we, Roberto was saying before about the, the the particular login and so on. And yeah, you you'd you'd mentioned this. Uh, it's got to be looked into because if they can accomplish it. And it's a desktop application which is doing this. So they've got a that they, somehow they've got a desktop desktop application uh, authorized, if you will, with QuickBooks and being able to act on different people's behalf, so to speak. Uh, Correct. We need to do that. So this, that's very very much on the to do list to uh, to get yeah. that same functionality in mind because the easier we can make it for you guys to uh, to to log in and get your data syncing. Then the better, obviously. So, so yeah. So no, it is uh, very much on the to-do list, and it's shown that somebody it can be done. It's just uh, it's a matter of me sitting down and now reevaluating QuickBooks as um, uh, login stuff. When you first mentioned it, I think I said I'd, I, I I I had to one quick look at the uh, that particular part of the website, and they had revamped it. So changes have occurred at uh, the developers portal of QuickBooks, and this might be part of the new changes because they are the, the open the open i forget the name open connector is it or open id they've, they've uh, disabled version one of it and oauth one and they are doing changes for version two so it might be that they're going down that path and we'll we'll have yeah. a look at it doing the same so i, yeah. I know on my i know on my on my in my situation because i had uh i i really only had to do an iif file once a day for each store and and my group has like uh, six stores on a, on an Azure server, so they're they're running through remote desktops. Right. And uh, I've I've got this, so I went ahead and bought the guy's uh, deluxe program because I had to get this this thing fixed, and it and it just wasn't worth my time to do it any other way. But uh, I was truly amazed when uh, the thing it just. It uploads all the files. 
No, very good. So, yeah, so, and then, obviously different files are different companies as well. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, and that's, he, he now that, and, and I did, and I did buy the gold version or the, the diamond version or whatever. It cost me, it cost me a thousand dollars, but there was a, a, the, his, his base version for just loading IIF files. Um, if you only had one company that you had to deal with it is, is only like $120. So, uh, it, to me, it was worth it if, if all I had to do was load an IIF file. Now, if you have to, you know, send data up and get results back from QuickBooks, you may need to do it a different way. But uh, yeah, for your, for your requirements, it was, you know, just a, a journal in, a, in an IIF. So no, I understand that. So no, I will. Um, we, we It's proved it can be done. Um, I'd be very intrigued, and I could I just ask QuickBooks themselves. <laughs> um, so it is something I will be uh, looking at now. So it's, yeah, no, it's, it's changes on a weekly but basis. You know, even while I was on uh, vacation, there were still changes going on to the classes because I took the laptop. So yeah, they, they, they are all the time. So it is, it is very much there. In the next few weeks, we'll have a look at that to see exactly what what can be done, and hopefully yeah. streamlined. I I can shoot you an email too, and. Uh, Pass you a little more info, so. Oh, by all means, yes, yeah, def definitely. <laughs> you you can kind of watch if you want to watch a transaction or something. You can see one because I got to I got to do some login with them tomorrow. The uh, the guy's writing a batch thing to do all six of their uh, of their stores. At at the end of the day, the guy's only got to hit one button. And it'll take all the IIF files that are sitting out there and send them all to the proper places in QuickBooks. The in each each one's got their own store or account in QuickBooks. Yeah, yeah, which which I would expect, of course. Yeah. Okay, so, that's fine. Uh, uh, we yeah, will. Yeah, and not, you know, like I said, I not I didn't want nothing against uh, doing it with Chillcat because I I think that's probably in the in the long run would would cover a whole lot more things than uh, than what this does. But. Well, in truth, you can because you yeah, you can manipulate currencies, tax rates. You can sure. manipulate uh, any anything within QuickBooks. You can manipulate at the desktop level. So it is you know quite a, a lot more. Um, uh, you can do a lot more stuff. With it. Yeah, but, but, it, but if you just had a, a simple thing of, uh, you know, something like I had in this case was just for IIF files was. Uh, well, it's, I mean, the 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 principle of security is the same though. Whether you're just posting journal entries or whether you're wanting to manipulate invoices and credit notes and so on and so forth, you still need to authenticate yourself within QuickBooks. So if the security is able to do it in one of the applications, it should be able to do it in both. So that's the principle I'll be taking and. and 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 following it from that point of view so yeah it looks, I'm, it I'm looks to me sure. like they're registering the application with quickbooks uh, assigned to a particular user versus um uh having to authenticate each well each it one. might be this open id and so on so that's why i'll I'll, uh, I'll take a look and then we'll have the best of both worlds we'll have the or yeah. and the other so that's the idea. Fingers crossed, of course. <laughs> yeah. I just had to get this thing done, so that that's why I, I, I jumped on that and, and got it done. But no, uh, that's okay. I mean, you still got the part of the tool set available to you for other things going forward. So you know, you definitely make use of it. Um, sure. So. Okay. Well, um, there's no other questions. So if there is no other questions. We'll start wrapping it up. Unless, of course, anyone's got any. I think. Um, oh, G security. Oh, actually, that's a good point you mentioned that because one of the things I've got to uh, the particular um, application that's being revamped for, um, I actually had the user uh, on while I was uh, away. So I sat on a beach um, getting a rollicking off them, actually. Um, uh, they were basically wanting, wanting a particular update. So G Security uh, within the next two weeks will be live out in an application. So it will be available in the next two weeks because um, – yeah, it's it's physically required, and I'm going to get uh, I'm going to get hung drawn and quartered if I don't deliver on it. So yes, yeah, so G Security, the uh, the new revamped version, will be available within the next two weeks. Now it will be it's uh, it's obviously there'll be uh, different updates and incarnations of it, but the core flexibility of it 
which is at the very heart of the new revamp, will be available. Some of the new security screens were already done. So little pop-ups of uh, popping up for PIN numbers where the actual um, the, 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 the buttons move around the screen. I'm trying to think if I've got it. No, I haven't actually, no, because it's still being updated from the laptop to this, so no, I can't. Maybe next week I might be able to quickly give a sneak preview, but imagine, if you will, it's all touch-friendly, so you can have your windows pop up. So if you've got to go into a screen and you want to prompt for a PIN code, then it'll pop up the uh, the particular buttons, but those buttons are in random places, if you want them to be, of course. Um, so uh, even if it's touch-friendly, you won't be touching the same part of the screen all the time, things like that. And, of course, then we can look at the uh, the, the fingerprint and the face uh, recognition as well, which will be via plugins, via, via OCX plugins. Um, but, yes, the, the, the core flexibility, and that is where you have uh, different tasks identified, and you can assign the tasks even at runtime if you wanted to and link them to particular different types of controls and that's at a group level or at a user level so you can have a group having access to certain functions within your application but one user being part of that group but being turned off just for certain tasks within that so the idea being we can get as flexible as we want so one group might not have access to things except for one user within the group these are all things which we've asked for so I think it was to do with web updating in a particular application. They've got some users which belong to two groups at the same time, uh, which is a bit obscure. Uh, but the flexibility of the, the new GSEC will allow that for, will allow for that type of scenario. Okay, are we still there? Is anyone still there? <laughs> um, we shall. Bill, are you still there, or have I actually... Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah sorry, you were very quiet there. I thought... Um, I thought well, I'm, muted. I'm muted myself. So, so it will, in, the, in the next two weeks, it will be it will be physically out in an application, so it'll definitely be uh, available in beta form uh, within the next couple of weeks. It's got Perfect. to be. So it's got, it's, yeah, it's got I, to be. I need, yeah, I need that real bad, too. So, um, so yes. Um, right, okay, we've got no other questions, so we shall start to wrap it up. So thank you, everybody. Um, see you all next week. We're here next week. The week after, believe it or not, is a public holiday. It's the uh, the, the Easter break in the UK. Um, I don't think we're doing the Monday, but I will I will, I will check to see if there's any plans being made on a, a, a personal level. If the plans have been made, then, of course, I, I, will, uh, I won't be available. If plans haven't been made, then I will do the webinar as normal. But I will confirm that next week. So as week, next week as normal. Okay, speak to everyone very soon. Thank you very much.